one billion years in the future, Earth still exists, though maybe not as we imagine it. Eras upon bygone eras worth of technology have been left behind by eight previous and fallen civilizations. It is now up to the denizens of the Ninth World to piece together what was left behind. Perhaps they're looking to carve out their place in the world, or simply to survive a land riddled with weird and unearthly dangers. Or perhaps still, they just wish to learn and uncover the secrets of the Numenera. Whatever it is this new era of adventurers and heroes is looking to discover, they'll have to dig through the imprinted echoes of the past to find it. Anamnesis. Noun. The recollection or remembrance of the past. Reminiscence. Hello, and welcome to Imprinted Echoes, a family-friendly Numenera actual play podcast. My name is Zan, and I'll be your GM. Thanks for joining us today. As always, we hope you're staying safe and healthy. The climb into the chasm begins. And while all four of the adventurers are experienced enough to make their way down with confidence, they still have to do so with care. Figures from the past are considered, climbing mishaps are endured, and creatures are disturbed. Join us as Nehemiah, Smallren, and Jory descend. You all take the lift down this part of the cliff face, down into the Voil Chasm. You can see as you go down the different levels changing. The houses and establishments closest to the edge of the canyon are the ones that are the most opulent. The richest people live there. They are the ones that the well-to-do folks and the big names are probably going to be seen at. And that continues a little bit down into the edge, but eventually it starts to peter off and become more of an underbelly, literally, as these structures kind of jut out into the chasm. It creates this shadow where underneath that all of these different houses and shacks and small little alcoves and vendors are starting to pop up underneath. The lift finally stops about a thousand feet down from where the top of the chasm had started. And you step out into the last portion that is well trailblazed. Everything down past this is a little more off-road. There's little streets, I'll call them, not quite well paved or anything like that, but areas where people have frequently walked. There's still a large number of citizens or people down here that are going about their day-to-day business. Some people who very much looks like they might live here and, and make their living here. Other people who might also be delving and traveling around and and looking to explore. There are some small little vendors and street shops that have been literally carved into the side of the cliff face. And it's very lively. Not necessarily with a ton of people, but it's vibrant and feels a little more down to earth than the -the over-the-top opulence that literally is above you. There's a number of paths that you can take into the less traveled areas depending on which direction you're going. But immediately after you step off the lift, you are kind of struck by the fact that this area seems just as lived in as the rest of the city. I assume you make your way to the more southwest portion of things, as that is the directions you've been given. No reason not to. Does anybody else think it's weird that it's only called a lift? I, I mean, okay, it's only called a lift, but it still goes down. So it's not a lift. 50% of the time. Should it have a different name, yes or no? I mean, clearly. Absolutely. What would that be? The descend doesn't sound right. That sounds very, um... And uh, and again, I mean, it's the same thing, because it does also ascend. Exactly. So what's the opposite of lift? Drop? Should it be a lift drop? I think a lift drop makes the most sense. That sounds dangerous, though, because if you drop something, it just goes splat, but it's not. It's like a gentle drop. Probably why they just stick with lift. But it's not lifting... (laughs) When you think of it, if you talk about the way it travels, then you're wrong 50% of the time. But if you talk about 
the fact that it is holding you up, so maybe you call it a suspender. Hmm. Ah, that's fair. I suppose anything can drop anything, though, but not everything can lift, so maybe they're focusing on the positive. Hmm. Jory Brex comes up behind you and like puts their hands underneath your arms and just lifts you <laughs> uh, about a foot off the ground and then drops you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what you were testing, but I hope you uh, <laughs> you found the information you were seeking. I think they're going I think I, I think what they're saying is we should call them arms. <sighs> it's not the worst. I do like that. <clears throat> Can I go again, please? <laughs> Brex does it one more time. <laughs> you get a little tickle in your tummy. As you head through the streets, there are plenty of places to buy and sell things, little markets and areas to talk to people or have conversations. And all of that is happening. And it's all kind of like I said, almost these little alcoves and areas kind of dug out of the cliff face or hanging off the side. There's some people that have made like platforms that are like hanging off the edge of the path that you are walking along onto thin air out into the canyon. There's a vendor selling rare creatures things that you might find down below or maybe elsewhere. Probably a lot of them a little less than legal to own. There are a dozen or more food stands with stuff that is just a little bit stranger than what you would find up topside. You pass someone with a small like rodent in a cage. They are sitting next to the rodent and shining these small golden yellow spheres and selling them for different amounts. There's someone with a sign that says Shin Minter. It's easy, especially for Smallrin and Nehemiah to recognize that this is probably somewhere where it is very easy for under the table and less official business to happen. Mm -hmm. Does a Shin Mint sound like a cookie to anybody else? <laughs> I may be pausing here in hopes of getting a snack. <laughs> and maybe. If you pause <laughs> maybe. at the Shin Minter, <laughs> what you see is someone who is creating shins. That is not what I anticipated. I'm very disappointed. Have a good day. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that to come off so cruelly. You have a wonderful day. I was just confused. <laughs> you get some very strange looks as you keep walking. Well, that was embarrassing, I suppose. <laughs> Maybe I could open a gelato franchise down here. What would I call it? Smallrin was about to say something and then realized Jory is literally just thinking aloud and she lets yep. her go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start rattling off names. I feel like we are in the Disney movie and it is like the fish out of it. Like Jory is the perspective character and... Small Run and Nehemiah are like the locals and it is just the moment of walking through the city and they are just like the, the neck is stretching looking at all of the things and we are just trying to like okay come on we're going and we're walking <laughs> <laughs> it's a very what's this what's this scenario exactly yeah. but what is Although, that <laughs> but but, what I, but also what I'm picturing is Jory is Anastasia and we are Dimitri and um what is oh, his very name good. what is Vlad 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 yep Ugh. but who I, is who <laughs> I, look moment to moment it changes it does that's it funny because really i was specifically thinking tangled when they get to the city yes and also i the, that also popped into my head we we are you me and brex are somehow all in this moment we Flynn are Flynn. Rider. <laughs> <laughs> but nehemiah is the only one who can smolder yes this is true yeah. for a lot of reasons yeah i mean small rent can but it's terrifying <laughs> It serves a very Brex different is Maximus. purpose. Oh, Brex yes, is Bre horse, Brex yeah. is Maximus. Oh. I, I, I do believe that makes Small Wren the little chameleon whose name escapes me. Oh my me. gosh. Oh, Pascal. 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 Yep. Actually, yes, I could see it. <laughs> yep. So you eventually reach the southwest edge of this path. And as you get there, you see a couple of people first kind of along the edge because the path actually stops rather abruptly. 
Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't continue on or, or zigzag and turn back down. It ends abruptly and across one edge of it before it cuts off. There are a number of anchors, not like ship's anchors, but like climbing anchors driven into the side of this path. And there is a person there with a sign who is selling access to these already driven climbing points, these anchor points. You also notice a couple of people around who seem to be offering guide services and one person selling access to these safety guaranteed anchor points. I mean, here's my thought though, and I'll get real close. If you were to just pay for one and then use one, it wouldn't matter whether or not it was safety guaranteed because if you fell, you'd just die and then you couldn't argue with the fact that you'd paid something for it, right? Am I right? I feel like I'm right. Oh, you're I mean, definitely right. Yeah, I definitely think this is one where it's like, hey, everybody takes this one one at a time. That way, if uh, one of us does uh, fall a very, 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 very long way, we can get our money back. No, this actually still seems but, like a pretty but, bad deal. Yeah, yeah because we've been dead, so... Um, yeah. Should we just do our own anchor points? I, I, feel like I we... think this is a good opportunity for me to say that Smallrin wants to change her flex skill for the day. <laughs> Mm. Um, to climbing, I assume. Spelunking, specifically. <laughs> but spelunking is underground. <laughs> spelunking is in caves, so keep that in mind. I mean, what kind I know, of but underground? I feel, like it, I feel like eventually we're going to go into... Okay, I, climbing does make more sense. I just like the word spelunking. I agree. Spelunking is great, but I feel like, I, I feel like climbing would be... <laughs> I'm just going to say it's climbing. All right, fine. You're no fun. I let you have espionage. <laughs> you do, and I am grateful for it every single session. <laughs> Can I call it what yes. I want on my sheet? And we all just know what yes. it means. <laughs> yes. Hey, Zan. Mm -hmm. Players, am I right? <laughs> Why did you only address that to Zan like not all of us have GM'd at some point in our careers? That's fair. To be That's fair... fair. Because Zan is the only other GM on the network. That, okay, that's fair. So, should we do our own anchors, or should we buy some? I don't have a say in this, I'm going to step away. Actually, that's not true, I do have a say, but I don't have any money. So, <laughs> my answer is done. I was going to say, I feel like all of us actually might be in a, a state of penury that precludes us. There's also, depending on what you have on your person, selling things here is easier than buying. Mm -hmm. But as you are all kind of trying to discuss, like, are we using these? Are we mm -hmm. making our own? How are we going to handle this? The person who is managing these anchor points comes up to you. She has extremely long, well-kept hair that's in very tight braids and has this very agile look to her. Nehemiah, it's easy to tell for you someone who has trained in movement in some way, whether for entertainment or for personal advancement, but this person knows how to move and how to move well. Mm -hmm. But with a very optimistic smile, she takes a couple steps towards you. Are you all interested in going over the edge then? Yeah, we are. We're just... Uh trying to sort a couple of things out before we head on down. Wonderful. Well, I do have plenty of anchor points open yet this mm -hmm. morning. If you are interested, just a shin apiece. Safety guaranteed. Guaranteed, you say? But if we Absolutely. were to fall, how could we be compensated for a guarantee? <laughs> you won't fall. That is an unsatisfying answer. I'm going to have a sit. Very well. Uh, what about the two of you then? We're hashing it out. Shin a piece, though, that seems fairly reasonable. And we get the return trip, too, with that, right? Absolutely. Okay. 100%. Just making sure. Yes, it is a long-term consideration. Mm -hmm. As long as you make your way down, if you want to make your way back, you are more than welcome to use the anchor points on the return trip. All right. Honestly, I don't see that we have much choice, even with a certain amount of information I've picked up along the way, I don't know that I'm the one who should be anchoring an entire team. Mm-hmm. We're just going to have to make sure we clean up down there, because I am uh, running low, economically speaking. <laughs> because unless uh, I can use the thunder vocalizer like Banshee from uh, X-Men, I don't see me being able to get down any other way. 
you know, I, I hadn't considered that. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> Look, if I get shoved off a high cliff, we are trying it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's absolutely. going to be an attempt. However, Jory, you got any other ideas? Uh, I will do whatever the group at large agrees to. However, I am out of money, so I'm afraid I would have to uh, bum some from uh, somebody. At a shin apiece, I believe that I can cover everyone. Thank you very much. I will be charging interest. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> what is Smallrin's interest rate? Smallrin offers a highly competitive interest rate at a... You know, I, I don't know enough about this no, to make no, jokes no, about fair. this. I was just making a joke. You're good. <sighs> The vendor nods and holds out her hand partial, like one hand for a handshake and the other hand for payment. Says, I'm Genesia. It is wonderful to be in business with you. Actually, everyone roll perception. Visually based perception? No, this is touch based. Level three. Success with an 18 plus two damage. I give her a very firm handshake. Very <laughs> firm handshake. Success with a 14. Success with a nine. I am super trained in perception. As you all shake her hand, the kind of like soft part in between her thumb and forefinger, you notice that there is something implanted there, like a small disc or something like that. Just subdermal, just below the skin, a small metal disc implanted there. And if you glance at it, you see kind of like very lightly, not even as dark as a a tattoo, almost like a scar, you see this symbol, a hexagon with a almost keyhole image in the middle with a diamond shape stretched very thinly across the Mm. center. It's almost like the dial of a compass. Yeah, very similar. Hmm. And smaller than you, very much know this symbol. (sighs) This is the symbol that the lexicon uses. Given this information, do I recognize her at all? You notice a scar on her right eyebrow Mm. that rings a bell for you. Not someone that was ever high up in any sort of rank, utilitarian operations Mm -hmm. style, tier. Street level. Within the organization. Yeah. This is someone you know as the knife. Well, this is a fascinating place to find someone like that. How do you proceed? Smallrin reacts not at all. This is not a conversation we're going to have in front of her. (laughs) Okay, okay. Um, But yeah, Smallrin does use her of the day climbing expertise to basically double check everything. You know, under the cover of like, we already were kind of sus about the stability of these spikes, but she really extra carefully goes everything before we make any attempt to descend. Everything that she has done, all the work, any knots or rope work she's done is solid and up to, at least your knowledge, the correct standard to make sure that you'll be safe. The anchor points are really solid. They look like they've been used hundreds of times Mm -hmm. without any sort of failure. The setup of everything all seems to check out. All right. Everything seems secure. Are we ready? Yeah. Looks good to you. Fine by me. Well, I hope you have a safe travel. And I will be looking forward to your return. Thank you very much. And you secure all your belongings and start making your way over the side. Again, this is still somewhat well traversed. It, again, it's not a carved path, but in the beginning portions, handholds and footholds are actually pretty clearly marked. People have gone through this a number of times. You can see places where it's been worn down a little bit more, sometimes actually marked with like bright scraps of fabric or little daubs of paint to kind of help people up and down and along this particular area. As you start getting farther down, though, those markers become less and less frequent. Mm. And as you also continue down, it does start to get a little bit darker. As you start getting farther down, I am going to have everyone make a climbing check. This is going to be a level four. And as you get farther down, it will increase in difficulty. But for this first leg, it's going to be a level four climbing check. Permission to use my uh, trained ability and balance. 100%. Rad. Permission to use my trained abilities in sensing danger for rickety things and navigation for the best route. I'll give you navigation. Okay. <laughs> if sensing danger comes up, I will let that apply. That's fair. Success with a nine. Success with a 14. Ooh, failure with Ooh. a two. Oof, 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 oof. 
Small Run, you are climbing down and you go to grab what looks like a really nice handhold. And as you put your weight on it to allow yourself to go down, the rock pulls from your hand and you kind of go flying backwards. The rope holds and all of your harness material, etc., keeps you from plummeting downwards. But you do kind of like roll back and hit the side of the canyon, of the cliff face, and you take two might damage. Oof. But in your hand, you see something you weren't expecting. Part of the reason this broke free is because it wasn't really part of the cliff face to begin with. You are holding a midnight stone. Ooh. A midnight stone is often something that is salvaged from various ruins, but it is a green and black lump of solid stone-like material, but it is smooth, almost like a river rock, and has this like mottled texture color to it. They are highly reactive because they contain void matter. They can be used to create a number of cipher-like effects, so sometimes they're used for powering or focusing various materials or ciphers or machines and things like that. Or they can be used to create an effect for the holder, like just on their own, if that person focuses their mind and their energy on it. But it is a random effect. Some sort of effect can be created, but you don't know what it's going to be. Correct. Interesting. Okay. Okay. And I'm assuming this this sounds like something that is potentially fairly valuable. It is. Excellent. Well, Smallrun's going to tuck that away. And also I'm going to look and see like where I grabbed it from. Are there any others in the immediate area? Since we, we have essentially shareholders in this adventure now that we have to pay off. No, there are not. There are not any others. It, it looks like it was locked inside this stone area, maybe right. kind of buried long ago but you have a midnight stone now. Ah, I misspoke. It is not necessarily random, but it is very hard to try and choose the effect. Basically, it is a level four task to concentrate on it to get an effect, and then an additional level eight task to choose the effect. Oh. And you continue on down. At this point, uh, you are like two thirds of the way down. Brex is having no trouble with the strength portion of this, but is not a dexterous being. So there are have been multiple times now where they have to jump and rappel down rather than like slowly taking their time, kind of like crashing into things <laughs> as they go. It is not a graceful movement for them to follow along with you. Go ahead, and we're going to make a, another check here. Level five this time as it increases in difficulty as you go down. All of those same assets or skills applied earlier will still apply now. I am going to spend for a point of effort uh, because sure. that hurt. Yeah, I'm going to do the same. <laughs> Failure with an eight. <gasps> Smallrin's not having a good time. Clearly. Failure with a two. <laughs> I'm going to spend for my late inspiration so I can retry a task I failed within the with last minute. With an additional minute. asset, right? All right, go ahead. Success with a 20. Hey! Right. Major effect or plus four damage. Take that. If we'll allow the major effect, I would take that, although part of Smallrin does want to deal plus four damage to this cliff face. <laughs> but considering we're currently climbing down it, that seems unwise. Failure with an un. <laughs> I'd like my major effect to be that Smallrin sees whatever is happening with Jory and snags her before she gets hurt. But not Nehemiah. Wait, did Nehemiah fail? <laughs> yeah. Oh, whoops. Okay. Well, since it's... <laughs> well, sorry. I missed that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's sorry. This is really funny. It's this is going all the way back to the beginning when Jory is the person who distrusted Smallrin and she felt she had to earn her trust <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Now Joy trusts everything that walks. <laughs> Who cares about you, my? Ex except um, this, the, the vendor up, uh, upstairs. Up, oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, no, upstairs, upstairs. Right. I, I will, since it is a major effect, since it was a 20, would I be able to do like a super cool thing and essentially help both of them? I will allow this to either keep them from getting injured, keep them from taking damage, or keep whatever effect I have in addition to that from happening. Ooh. Hmm. 
What do you think, guys? Do you want to get hurt or do you want to get scared? I can potentially take hurt. <laughs> I can potentially take scared. Actually, I, I, I either way is fine. <laughs> Since we are at the beginning of this adventure, I'm going to avert the damage just because depleting our pools this early on sounds like a bad idea. You see both Nehemiah and Jory kind of start slipping around the same time. There's a portion of the cliff face that starts kind of giving way under the weight of both of them holding on to it. And as that happens, you take your grappling hook and you kind of swing it and quickly launch it out and kind of hook it on something around the other side. So as they fall, there is an extra rope behind them so they can grab onto it and keep from swinging and smashing into the cliff face. Mm. But as you do so, you realize that what you hooked onto was a pipe. Uh -oh. And there have been pipes going kind of down throughout this, all the way down in various areas. Some of them really sturdy, others not so much. And the pipe comes swinging loose. And as it does so, a fountain of some sort of sludge just sprays everywhere. And I need each of you to make a might roll level four. I have a failure with a nine. Okay. I'm going to spend for effort. Mm -hmm. Success with a 15. Wonderful. Success with a 19 and a minor effect. Okay, okay. You all get blasted with this stuff. But while most of you can kind of like just shake it off, it's gross, it's definitely toxic. No idea where it came from or what it is really, but... Jory, ugh, it just sinks in and you feel it like take hold of you. I need you to first roll me a d6. Okay, that's a six. Amazing. You feel your body start to change. Oh. Uh. Something in this sludge is quite literally mutating you. Oh, oh gosh. My. Please roll a d100. Oh, gosh. oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Fing sure. Fingers crossed for a tail, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Free, hence, style, jewelry. It's a 17. Okay, let's see. You start wiping this goo off of you. And as you do so, you realize that your skin, as you wipe it off your arm, is bright blue. And you go, I don't, like, what in the, that's terrible. What, why? Why can't I, like, this is not what I wanted. And as you think about what it was you wanted, what color would jewelry on her skin. <laughs> like, if you could have any color skin, what color skin would Jory have? Oh, my. Um, um, this is some deep character work. It is. It <laughs> is. I, I feel like I need, a, I need some time to sit with this one. I'm going to go with a kind of dark, deep red. You just become crimson. Huh. Your skin changes colors as you wish. Oh. This is an asset to tasks involving hiding. <laughs> what? <laughs> Incredible. That's phenomenal, honestly. I would like to point out that the D6 was the type of mutation. A six is a powerful mutation. That it, like, rolling a highest one is something that is powerful and helpful and gives you, like, a skill or an asset or an enabler. <laughs> That's oh, very boy. cool. <laughs> what, was, what was a one? <laughs> Um, a cosmetic mutation. One and two is cosmetic, three is distinctive, four was beneficial, five was harmful, and six is powerful. Oof. Nice. Smallrin is a little jealous. <laughs> Just a little. I bet. You all. <laughs> Before we get to that, Smallrin, you have a minor effect. Yes. Um, in the interest of not having to worry about this later, I would like the minor effect to be because it only affected one of us and Jory's kind of delighted by it, we don't make enough ruckus about it for people below us to know we're the ones who brought the pipe down. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. I love that. <laughs> it's stealthy. We can hear like people below us making sounds of weird or disgust or whatever, but they don't seem to realize that it was our party that knocked the pipe loose. I love that. That's very good. Jory, you also realize that th this is something that you can use to like blend in places like you try really hard and you can make yourself look like the cliff face which is really cool 
this is honestly like the best possible way this, this could have gone. <laughs> yeah, for no. sure. Um, honestly, yeah. There are some really not great mutations on the harmful list. I'm so sure. There also could have just been like some weird cosmetic ones. There was ones like you grow mandibles. <laughs> Tail. <laughs> uh, Tail is one of them. So like there's, there's some interesting stuff on there. But yeah, it's uh, this is what you got. The implications of this on my propensity to try to appear as a god in certain circumstances, <laughs> oh, no. I feel. Oh, oh <laughs> right. <no. laughs> you know, you know, it's interesting. How would this translate to something in Symphony? Wouldn't that be Ooh. weird? Yeah. I guess Not it's that- like you drop your own backing track. <laughs> like total, total control. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or I feel like it would just be a an ability to change kind of the the timbre of your own sound so that you mm. you sound oh, I'm completely an oboe. different. <laughs> now I'm a French horn. Now I'm a viola. <laughs> As a completely out of game reminder, the three of you do still have those abilities that you got from being transferred back to the data sphere. Keep those in mind. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, I do need to remember to do that. That's yeah. Point. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the 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 right time. Too. You can talk to this voice whenever, Jory. You get a, you get a question a day. I know, but I, I want I want to be flat on the ground, with my ear to the to the dirt. <laughs> Sorry, soil. Didn't mean dirt. Because I believe I think it's the ground still. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, you are up yeah, against a cliff enough. face currently. I know. I've thought of that, but I'm not saying you have to use it now. Yep. I'm just giving you the reminder yep. that you can use it once a day. Yep. Yep. Do you let anyone know this is happening, Jory? I, I'm going to wait until we are on the ground. Uh, and until then, I'm just going to kind of giggle a lot <laughs> and try to hide my giggling. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I've decided very quickly that I want to make this a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the idea of we're all like Jory's giggling as we continue climbing down. And that's just so normal that none of us think anything of it. Oh, for sure. (laughs) Absolutely. You keep going down, and in looking at the map that Nehemiah has, you are kind of finding your way through everything. You do see that the ruins that were marked that kind of like go off the side of the canyon wall, and it is these pipes, but you start hearing them before you see them. And it's just this very haunting whistle as it seems that air is passing over and through and around these pipes, some of which are open or have cuts in them, that it's just howling in this very off-putting, dissonant tone. And you can see a couple little, like, platforms in certain areas and little alcoves and areas that you might be able to like go in and around these pipes it's massive it's a good portion of like the cliff face off to one side so you start passing by that and noting that on the map you're able to see that you only have a little bit farther down before you're going to get to the area of the one that goes into the cliff itself i'm going to have you make one more climbing check down level six this time (sighs) point of effort yep also spending for that didn't think to do it too late. Failure with the three. Success with a 19, and a fail- Nehemiah. And a for failure once. with a five for small run. Aha. <laughs> uh-huh. <sighs> All right, Nehemiah, minor effect, or do you want me to go through what's happening here before? Uh, I, I, uh, I would like to that. somehow mitigate what is about to happen to my two friends. <laughs> you can, with a minor effect, you can select one of them. Okay. Nehemiah would go for Jory because Jory just got splashed and doesn't want anything worse to happen. Okay. How do you do this? I had an idea for Small Run, but I, I, do you have a thought on, on how you might help Jory? If not, I can come up with something. Um, I think it is a situation where Nehemiah does kind of a drop grab. Besides like, okay, this next bit is a little bit harder, but I think I could actually like balance myself better if I... So he lets go and then catches back on at a certain mm-hmm. point down. And that drops him past Jory. And as Jory slips, it's like hand out. Very cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You grab Jory and keep her from taking any damage from bouncing around and slamming into things or that sharp Mm -hmm. snap of the drop. But Smallrin, your foot slips this time 
And as you do, you don't take any damage. It's just your foot that slips, but you knock over a pretty sizable chunk of rock and you watch it go down. It is headed straight for some kind of nest. Oh no. That is in the cliff face below you. And as it lands, you hear a terrible shriek (sighs) as two tetrahydras Oh, God. Come flying out oh, of their nest. I don't like that. Uh, so these are tetrahedron shaped, so kind of like triangle pyramid type shape, but they are covered in feathers, multiple eyes, sharp little mandible teeth, mm. and four tentacles Ugh. on their bottom side. Don't like that. And giant feathered wings as well. These are common enough within the world that you know what these are. They are fiercely protective of their nests and their eggs and anything that comes into the way of harming them is going to be their target. Oh boy. And I need everybody to roll for initiative. (laughs) Oh, this is not going to be good. Thank you so much for listening to episode 83 of Imprinted Echoes and Amnesis. As always, if you'd like to follow the podcast on social media, you'll find us on Twitter and Facebook at Imprinted Echoes and our website, imprintedechoes.com. On that website is where you can find links to the Ghostlight Media merch store and our Patreon if you're able to help us out monetarily. And on that note, I'd like to thank Savani, Two Nerds in a Pod, and Ice Deer Brewing for their continued support. If you'd like to help us out in other ways, take a moment to subscribe to the podcast leave us a rating and review, and tell a friend about the show. As always, you can find our hosts on Twitter, myself at Covered and Sawdust, Chase at TQ Loudly, Rin at Rin underscore Moran, and Bridget at Really Bridget. And be sure to follow our network, Ghostlight Media, at GLM Pods. Thanks once again for listening, and I hope you'll be back in two weeks to hear yet another episode of Imprinted Echoes. And until then... May your ciphers never malfunction. Imprinted Echoes is produced by Zan Campbell-Johannes and Chase Greenley, and is edited by Alex Berkowitz. Original show theme music is by Justin Longacre. This has been a Ghost Light Media production.